In this problem, we have an arrangement of four charged particles, and we want to find information about the ratio of the charges on them, using the information given to us in the problem. It states that charges 1 and 4 have an equal charge to one another, called big Q, and charges 2 and 3 also have a charge equal to each other, called little q. We're looking for the ratio of big Q's charge to little q's charge. But that is only in the case that the net force on charges 1 and 4 are equal, which tells us something important right off the bat. The ratio we're looking for, in part A anyways, it has to be negative. And the reason why we know that is because, think about it, if big Q and little q had the same charge magnitude, then it would be impossible for any of these particles to have a net force of zero. For the sake of argument, let's say that charge 1 is positively charged. That means that charge 4 is also positively charged, since charge 1 and charge 4 have the same charge. If little q, that is 2 and 3, also had positive charges, then that would mean that because of Coulomb's law, the like forces repel, opposite forces attract, that would mean that there is a force pushing, it, pushing charge 1 away from the square from all three other charges, and there would be nothing holding it back to give it a net charge of zero. So big Q and little q must have opposite charges. If little q was negative, for example, and 2 and 3 were negatively charged, then those two charges, for example, would be pulling them down back towards the square, while those forces would be countered by charge 4, which is positive and would repel charge 1 away from the square. So right away we know for a fact then that big Q and little q have opposite signs, which means that the ratio between them must be negative. So let's hold that in our heads for now, let's come back to that later, but now let's do some math to figure out what that ratio actually should be. For the sake of our math, let's continue looking at charge 1, and let's continue assuming that it's positively charged. But technically, it could be negative, and charges 2 and 3 are positive. We have no way of knowing that for sure, but it doesn't matter, and it doesn't change our math anyways. And to keep things as simple as possible, let's specifically look at the horizontal axis, the x-axis. If we're looking at one dimension, our math is going to be much simpler. If the net electric force is equal, then this net force must be equal to zero. So the horizontal forces that charge one feels from the three other forces must add up to a net force of zero. From charge two, charge one will be feeling an attractive force in the positive horizontal direction towards the right because of the fact that they have opposite charges and will be attracted towards each other. So this component of the force is going to be equal to, and I'm applying Coulomb's law here, the Coulomb constant K times the charge on charge 1, big Q, times the charge on charge 2, the little q, divided by A, the side length of the square, which is the distance between the two charges. And that A is squared, as per the inverse square law. From charge 3, charge 1 will experience a downward attractive force for the same reason, because it's negative, so the opposite charges attract, except we don't need to consider that right now for the type of math we're doing, since we're only looking at the horizontal axis, and the only force that charge 3 will be putting on charge 1 is in the vertical direction, with no component whatsoever in the horizontal axis. See what I mean? Looking at one axis makes our math much simpler. And lastly, from charge 4, it's positive, so there's going to be a repulsive force pushing charge 1 towards the top left. This means that there's a component of force on both the x and y axes. But we're only looking at the x-axis here, which is directed towards the left, in the negative direction. So the next component of the force here is going to be negative, and it's equal to k times the product of the two charges, which in this case is both big Q, divided by the distance between them, which is this diagonal line that goes through the square. So in the denominator of Coulomb's law goes the square of the distance between the two particles, and it's pretty easy to show using the Pythagorean theorem that the distance between these two should be a times the square root of 2. So in the denominator here, I'm going to put the square of root 2 times a.
And one final thing we need to consider here is the fact that this particular force is at an angle, it's diagonal with respect to both coordinate axes, so we'll have to multiply it by one of the trig functions, in this case the cosine function, because again we're looking at the x-axis here, and the cosine function is the one that goes with the horizontal, and it's going to be the cosine of 45 degrees, because this is, this is a square here, so this is going to be a 45 degree angle, since it's half of 90. All right, so we've got this formula here, and we have it set it equal to zero. So now let's try solving this formula for the ratio, for big Q over little q. Let's try simplifying this a little bit, making some changes so that it's easier to work with. I'm going to take this term and add it to the other side of the equation, to the equation. so we've got one term equals the other term. I'm also going to distribute this square here, so that we're, uh, so this denominator looks simpler. So it'll uh, look like the square root of 2 squared times a squared. And yeah, let, let's do that real quick. So that's what I've done here. I've also rewritten the cosine of 45 degrees as the square root of 2 over 2, since that's what that is equal to. And now we can simplify this even further. There is a k in both terms, so that cancels out. We can cancel out one of these big q's on either side. This a squared term can cancel out. So now we're left with small q equals big Q over 2 times the square root of 2 over 2, which we could probably simplify even further as big Q over 4, 2 times 2 is 4, times the square root of 2. And if we want to solve for the ratio big Q over little Q, we'll just divide this small Q into the big Q and flip these parts into the other side. So we end up with 4 divided by the square root of 2. So that means this is it. We've solved for big Q over little q, and this is the ratio that it's equal to. If we use a calculator, we can approximate this in more of a decimal form, and we can see that this ratio is equal to 2.83. And as we established way back at the beginning of the problem, it must be negative. So the ratio is negative 2.83. And that's the ratio that the charges need to be at in order for charges 1 and 4 to be stationary. Now let's address part B. Is it possible for the net force on all four particles to be zero? Well, we've already discussed what the condition must be in order for charges 1 and 4 to be stationary. It must have, there must be a very specific charge ratio there. What we can do to answer part B is look at charges 2 and 3 now and see if the same ratio is required. If the same ratio is required, then it would work. We just need that ratio and all the charges would be still. But if a different ratio is required, then that could be a sign that this is not going to work out. Let's try it. Let's try looking at charge number 2 and let's see if we can find the same ratio we found for part A. Let's look at the net force on charge 2, and this time let's look at it in the y direction. We defined charge 2 to be negative, so let's look at the forces that it's feeling from the other ones. From charge 2, it's feeling an attractive inwards force, because they're like signs, but we're looking at the y-axis, so this is irrelevant. Charge 3 is negative, so because they're like, it's going to feel a repulsive force towards the top right of the page. And the y-axis of this, or the y component of this, is going to be k times the, the two small q's divided by that diagonal distance, which is still going to be the square root of 2 times a, that's squared. And now that we're looking, and again, diagonal force, so we're going to have to use one of the trig functions. And since we're looking at the y component this time, we'll be using the sine of 45 degrees instead of the cosine. So that's that term from charge 3. And from charge 4, the charge 2 is going to experience a direct downwards force because charge 4 is positive, so they're opposites, and opposites attract. So we then subtract k times small q times big Q divided by a squared. And if we want charge 2 at rest, then this whole formula should be equal to 0. Now let's use the same simplification process we used for part a. Try to find that ratio, big Q over little q. And note that the sine of 45 degrees is also equal to the square root of 2 over 2. But anyways, the k's cancel out, one of the small q's cancel out, 
the little a squareds cancel out. To get big Q over little Q, let's divide both sides of this by little Q, so that we have big Q over little Q is equal to the square root of 2 divided by, and that's 2 times 2, so that's 4. And, uh-oh, we can kind of see something doesn't look right here. Because now the ratio we've calculated is radical 2, root 2, over 4, which is the flip of what we found for part A. And if we use our calculator to round this to decimal, we find that it's totally different from what we have in part A. Something like 0 0.35. And, of course, it would be negative 2. So what that tells us is that the charge ratios required to keep those pairs of charges at rest are not the same, which means that it is impossible for all four charges to be zero, to have a zero net force on them at once, because the conditions required for each of those cases don't match up. So the answer to part B is no, that is not possible. That is all for this problem. If it helped you out, please consider subscribing, as that'll help me make more videos like this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I'll try to clear things up, help you out, clarify any confusion. But for now, that's all, and I hope you have a lovely night. Bye-bye.